Nonlinear analysis is more reliable than linear static analysis as it provides realistic results and can predict the behavior of a component in real life conditions. In this video, we will perform a nonlinear static analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. The main objective will be to calculate the deformation and plastic strain in a cantilever plate component. So let's get right into it. There are three main types of nonlinearity. Let's take a quick look at each of these types. Geometric nonlinearity is applicable when the component is subjected to large deformations. This also includes follower loading conditions in which the direction of applied force changes according to the deformation of the component. Material nonlinearity predicts the yielding of component when the yield stress value is crossed. This helps to determine the plastic deformation and failure of the component. Lastly, boundary nonlinearity accounts for behavior of contact between different components and other external effects. In this video, we will only focus on implementing geometric and material nonlinearity. I will cover boundary nonlinearity in a separate tutorial. Let's start by setting up and running a linear static analysis subcase. We will observe the results of this linear static analysis. This will help us to determine the values of actual parameters that we need to set up in order to run the nonlinear analysis. As you can see, 2D quad mesh has already been created on the plate component. Let's start by creating a new material. We will use the default mat1 card image. Enter the value of Young's modulus as 5000. Poisson's ratio is 0.34. Let's use a density value of 1E-9. Now create a new property. With card image as P shell, select the material in proper selection box. We will set the thickness of the plate as 2mm. Now assign this property to the plate component. The material will get updated automatically. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the constraints tab from analysis panel. Let's use the by geometry selection criteria to select all the nodes on this edge of the plate. With all 6 degrees of freedom checked, create the constraints. Now create a new load collector for force. Open the forces tab from analysis panel. Let's select the required nodes using the by geometry selection criteria. We will apply a force of magnitude 5 Newton on each node. Select Y axis as the direction. Create the forces. Now to link these forces and constraints, create a new load step. Select analysis type as linear static. Select the appropriate load collectors for SPC and load in proper selection boxes. The linear static analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Open the Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set export options to all and run options to analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. As the analysis is now complete, we can view the results in Hyperview. Open the Contours tab. Apply the displacement results. As you can see, the plate is elongating in a very unrealistic manner. This is not how the component would behave in actual conditions. Select elemental stresses and set averaging method to simple. The stress values are higher than acceptable range. Now we will start to define the geometric nonlinearity. We will also activate follower loading conditions to make the results more realistic. 
Let's take a look at the different settings to activate a non-linear analysis subcase in Hypermesh and Optistruct. Let's start by saving a copy of this model in a separate folder. Now we will define geometric non-linearity parameters to make the simulation more realistic. We will start by deleting the linear static analysis load step. Now create a new load step. Select analysis type as non-linear static. Select proper load collectors in SPC and load selection boxes. Now to define non-linear analysis settings, right click on NL param large displacement and select create. Enter a proper name for this load collector. Set the number of load sub increments to 10. We will use k step value as 6. Let's restrict the maximum number of iterations to 25. To define nonlinear outputs, right click on NL out and select create. Provide a name to this load collector. Check the box next to number of increments and enter value as 10. Now press Ctrl F and type param to create the parameter card. Check the box next to Expert NL and select Yes. To activate follower loads, set value of follower to 1. To output non-linear analysis animation files, set NLA file to yes. Similarly, set NLMON to yes. Now search for global output request card. Select displacement and set format as H3D. Let's also output the strain and stress results in H3D format for all the elements in the model. Save the model. Click on Optistruct to launch the nonlinear analysis solver. This might take some time to solve. Now we can view the results in Hyperview. Let's view the displacement plot using Contours tab. It is clear that the plate is not elongating unrealistically anymore. This is the result of considering geometric nonlinearity. Let's view the stress results. The maximum stress value has reduced but it is still higher than expected. Despite large deformation values, we are unable to see any plastic strains in the plate. As we are interested in observing the plastic strain in the component, we need to implement material nonlinearity along with the previously included geometric nonlinearity. Now we will define some additional settings to define the behavior of the material past the yield point. We will again make a copy of this model in a separate folder. Now we will implement the material nonlinearity parameters. Select the previously created material from model browser. Check the box next to mat S1 and set material type as plastic. H is the slope of the stress strain curve in plastic region. 
Let's use this value as 0 0.5. Set the yield function yf to 1. We will use the yield stress value that is limit 1 as 100 megapascal. The nonlinear material has now been defined. Save the model. Launch the solver using Optistruct tab. Let's view the results in Hyperview. Apply the displacement results using Contours tab. The maximum deformation is comparable to the geometric nonlinearity results. Let's view the stress results. As you can see, the maximum stress value is now capped at the yield stress. This shows that there is plastic deformation in the component. Let's view the plastic strains. Now, the plastic strain is clearly visible on the plate. We have successfully observed the plastic deformation of our component by implementing geometry and material nonlinearity in a static analysis subcase. And this is how we can perform a nonlinear static analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a big thumbs up, it helps a lot. Do watch my other videos to learn how to set up and run simulations using Hypermesh. Thanks for watching.